Okay, so let's consider a nonlinear advection example. And so here we're going to take our C of U just to be U itself. So what this is telling us is that the the speed of the waves will be uh, dependent on or equal to the actual height of the function u itself. Um, and, and then we will take uh, an initial condition uh, at time t equals 0 to be defined by this function right here. So this is piecewise defined where it's equal to 2 for x negative and then uh, 2 minus x down to 1 at time, at, sorry, at x equals 1. And then it's 1 constantly um, thereafter. And so, like I said, uh, the speed it depends on the actual height. So that's telling you then that if we look at uh, phi here, that the uh, this part of the signal is going to be um, moving with speed 1 uh, to the right. This part over here is going to be um, propagating with speed 2. So. In particular, this this discontinuity right here, uh, the the sort of wave front, is going to be moving at speed two, and the one down here is going to be moving at speed one, and as a consequence, uh, this guy is going to outpace this guy, and eventually it will become over top of it. So, <coughs> let's see how this boils down. So our um, solution u of xt is going to be given by, well, it's going to be 2 um, when x is less than 2t, and it's going to be 1 when uh, we're past t plus 1. Uh, but what happens in the middle when x is between uh, 2t and t plus 1. Okay, so that's a bit of a mystery. So let's go back to our um, characteristic curves from the previous slide. We saw that uh, they're defined by x is equal to c of phi of xi t plus xi, right? Okay, so this tells us then that um, <coughs> we're going to have uh, curves given by x equals 2 minus c t plus c because 2 minus c is our um, uh, that's going to be our speed for for curves emanating from this particular section over here you should think of if this formula is mysterious to you this last one that I wrote down um, just realize that this is good old y equals mx plus b, except we're in different notation where it's actually x is equal to mt plus b. And <clears throat> then the form of the line has slope. Uh, uh, we're going to have speed of uh, 2 minus c because that's what's giving us our speed on this section right here. And then we have the offset of, of c. So then, let me switch back to black. Um, so then we can solve this one for C by rearranging. So what happens here is so we have uh, x minus 2t is equal to minus Ct plus C is uh, 1 minus t times C. So I can divide this part over to the other side. And I get um, c is equal to x minus 2t over 1 minus t. All right. And then um, now if I look at uh, uh, c between 0 and 1, My um, phi of xi is going to be equal to 2 minus c because that's how it's it's defined during this uh, or in this in this region, and so we have uh, 2 
minus this thing we just coughed up in the last uh, step. And doing the arithmetic there, we end up with uh, 2 minus x over 1 minus t. So that is our phi of psi. OK, and so then um, if you recall the, the very last equation from the one we saw last time, it was that u of xt is equal to phi of psi, where psi is defined implicitly through that equation. So then that tells us that um, we have uh, found our u of xt is going to be equal to 2. And then it's going to be equal to 2 minus x over 1 minus t. And then it's going to be equal to 1. OK, so what does that look like? So here's a picture of it that I drew. And just to call your attention to some details about um, what's going on here, let's, let's actually zoom in a little bit. So, OK, so right along the front, we have uh, our uh, initial condition of uh, phi coming down here. I'm just going to draw it over in green. So there's our, our phi. And then we have, um, maybe I'll get rid of that. And then as it propagates forward in time, at some point you're going to get to, um, let's see, let's go, oh, let's go pink. Uh, at time uh, t equals 1, it's changed and it now goes, when it reaches the middle, straight down and then continues onward. And if we go further into the future at a time 2, it goes actually backward. So this is now no longer the graph of a function because it's it's uh, violating the, the single value property. Uh, and so it's looking like a, like a z-shaped type thing. And so we can see right here at time t equal 1, this, this is where the upper wave front overtakes the bottom wave front. And we have this straight vertical line right here. Um, to give you another uh, idea of what's going on, let me um, draw for you what it would look like if I took these green lines right here and projected them down vertically. OK, so here's a picture of that. So let's zoom in again, see what we can see. So the yeah, so these, these green lines right here have been drawn down. And you can see how they are bunching up and, and uh, crashing together right here. And this is at time t equals 1. And, and so you've got the, uh, here's, here's the, the blue wave fronts, the wave fronts that are emanating from the, uh, the blue zone, and wave fronts that are emanating from the uh, purple along here. These signals are propagating much more slowly. And then you can see how they start to bunch up and crash into each other.